Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Today we are here with Nate from the Irish Crystal Palace Supporters Club and Phil, obviously, as usual. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, the whole situation at Arsenal. Uh, Phil, obviously, there was a bit what? of a shock result there at the weekend. and um, shock, Was it a shock result, Paul? Was it? Like, it seems to be kind of... It seems to be common practice, like... Um, Obviously, we we got battered by Liverpool after the Liverpool game. We come out, we get, we we do put we put it up to Chelsea. We have a great performance against Chelsea. Everybody starts to say, "Oh well, maybe we've turned the corner. Maybe we've got a bit of cohesion." We beat two smaller teams, West Brom and I can't, yeah, and whoever else. I don't really care. But um, then we go to Watford. Brighton, Marco Silva, Brighton as well, yeah, that's the one. Um, we go to Watford away, Marco Silva. Top and, manager. Yeah, top manager, good side. They play us off the park, especially in the second half. Uh, it's kind of, you, you get these results, you, you beat these kind of, these smaller teams and you think they've, they, they kind of, they have turned the corner, we've tapered over some cracks and then we throw it away again. Basically, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And it's just it's Arsenal in a nutshell now. Um, was there was there any shock? Was there any shock inclusions or anything in the squad on the day, or was it just the fact these were just shy? It was. It was. Or, just or the was it? Was it? Was it? Or was it just a tactical masterclass from Marco Silva? I mean, that Watford side are a good side. It was, yeah, it was definitely second half Marco Silva would have said to his players. The defence were on the halfway line. His team completely pressed us. Uh, Awobi was a passenger. Bayern, oh yeah, geez, I haven't seen Bayern play this bad for a while. Uh, Richarlison absolutely had him every time he had the ball. Watford were going through Rich, uh, Richarlison and he just caused Bayern so much problems. Bayern ends up taking Richarlison down in the box. Watford get a penalty. Then they tie the game up. The way we set up in the first half, we go with a negative midfield of Xhaka and El Elneny. Sideways pass, missed a sideways pass. There's no creativity in the team. We have a fully fit, informed Jack Wilshere. Now, obviously, Jack Wilshere has his critics. Jack Wilshere has had his problems. Jack Wilshere's last few games for Arsenal, uh, Doncaster, of course, not a great side, uh, and also clone in the cup. But when he plays... We play so much quicker, we move the ball so much better, and he moves. He knows how to get into space, he knows how to receive the ball, and he knows how to find people in space. Xhaka needs about 20 seconds to make a decision, and El Nenny, as much as he tries, he just doesn't have it. He's not a Premier League level midfielder. Um, and it's just it's just shocking team selection. Uh, of course, Xhaka put in a nice cross for Marta Zaka. like You're going to find Marta Zaka's head, you know, it was a good header, in fairness. It was a good header, a good strong header. But like when you're when you're getting when you're getting pressured the way Arsenal were getting pressured in the second half, like Mertzak is not the man to have in there. You need kind of you need a more solid, aggressive player like a Koscielny or whatever. Um, but they just put they put it up to us, and they 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 were the better team. They they could have had maybe four goals in the in the second half. Yeah. Well. Uh, you were, you were saying like beforehand, before we came on there, that um, you had some points that you wanted to share in regards to the board. But just before you go into that, I'm just going to say, uh, Nate, yeah, did, yeah. Did you, Nate, did you see any of the game? From Arsenal-Watford? Yeah. I mean, with Arsenal, and I've got Arsenal relatives in London, so I, I don't hear the end of it when they lose. I mean... My WhatsApp groups go mental when Arsenal lose. It's like Arsenal fan TV. I have to turn my WhatsApp off half the time. But the problem Arsenal have is that there's no leadership in that team. There's no one on that pitch that is a Patrick Vieira, is a Tony Adams. And this is Arsenal fans have said this themselves. But you look back at teams that Arsenal have had over the years and they've always had someone that will grab someone by the neck and go, Oi, sort your life out. We're not here to just turn up and be beaten. We're here to win. And Watford, yeah, they're having a good start to the season and they're not as poor as some people thought they would be, but they're still Watford. It's not like you're playing Manchester City or Manchester United or, with all due respect, Liverpool, where you're thinking, geez, if we come away with a two-goal with a two goal deficit, we'll take that because you can't expect to keep a clean sheet against these teams. But Watford, 
they're no great shakes. They're doing well, and you know Marco Silva is a good manager, but they've got Troy Deeney up front. The bloke's a plumber. Like <laughs> I'd be more afraid of going up against bloody Freddie Ladapo than Troy Deeney. The bloke is a plumber of a footballer. He looked more fit in the dog and duck than he would in the Premier League team. So the fact that he bullied Arsenal's defence, I'm just thinking is a big brick, brick, brick house of a man. He's you know Mertesacker's built solidly, and Troy Deeney is bullying him. And yeah. all summer long, Arsenal fans could see they needed a defender. They sold Gabriel, uh, Gabriel, not necessarily a big loss, but if you sell a defender, you bring one in. It's common sense. If you sell a player, you replace them. Palace yeah, is offering that because we did replace well. Fraser Campbell. We lost Loic Remy, although that was no big loss because the bloke was as much used as a chocolate teapot half the season. And <laughs> for Arsenal to, to, to bring it back, you know, there are players in that team that aren't Arsenal players. Yeah. I would agree. You know, Danny Welbeck is a decent footballer, but he's not an Arsenal level player. And Arsenal yeah, fans no. will tell you that themselves. You know, he, he's been decent for Arsenal, but is he really the standard they want to go and challenge for trophies and titles? Well, no. well, Phil, do you not do you not think that Welbeck's been one of your best performers this season? I like obviously I agree with Nate. Um, from an ability standpoint, he may not be the Arsenal player of all. One thing that Welbeck will give you that Ozil won't give you is pure 100% effort. He will track a runner, and when he has been in the team, he was very he was doing very well. The thing about Welbeck is he obviously he picked up that niggling injury against Chelsea. Wenger rushed him back into this game, and of course we've seen he hobbled off. Um, another thing that really frustrates me, and it's happened every game he's played in, Lacazette gets taken off. On the 60th minute, without fail. Like, if you've seen, um, is that an issue with his fitness or just a change of tactics? Do you know? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. And even if it, like, just just leave him on. He's a fox in the box. He's a poacher. Like, imagine it was Lacazette rather than Ozil who had that one on one. Ozil missed a sitter. He should have scored that goal. Ozil came on. He put a good. He put a good ball in for a Wobi. He was walking around, hands on the hips. He was rubbish. Um. It was actually it, just that Arsenal in the second half were embarrassing. They just capitulated. Classic Arsenal, it, and you know, it, it, like you, you you watch you watch kind of Arsenal the way the way they go, and I'm not even angry anymore. I'm just kind of like, oh well, yeah, here we go. It happened again. Fair enough. Yeah, and um, so you wanted to touch on some points there. Do you want to go ahead? There? Yeah, because like. Obviously, if we're talking about you know team selection wrong, we know like if previous videos I've done, you know my stance on Wenger. I think Wenger should have left five or six years ago. Um, I'm not going to solely talk about yeah. Wenger out. I'm I'm going to talk about like am I, like let's just say tomorrow we sell we get rid of Wenger and we bring in somebody else under our board. No manager will thrive under Stan Kroenke. Stan Kroenke is like they talk about Wenger being a specialist in failure. Kroenke is an accomplice. He I'll just I'll just share something with you here. Kroenke is owner of the Denver Nuggets, the Colorado Rapids, and also um the LA Rams as well. So the LA Rams record has been he, he's overseen an LA Rams team that have won 36 games, lost 51, or lost 59. His Denver Nuggets team has missed the playoffs in the last four consecutive seasons. And his Colorado Rapids did win the, they won the MLS title in 2010, but they've missed the playoff three times in the last five seasons. He's worth six billion. He claims Arsenal have no money. And he's just after buying the biggest ranch in Texas for seven hundred and twenty-five million. Mm. And yeah. they talk about no money for players. I mean, go ahead. With, with uh, Stan Kroenke, the problem that Arsenal have is that he's the typical American businessman. He's only in it for the money. And exactly. to be fair, a lot of American investment in the Premier League has proved that they're not in it for the love of football or the club, because obviously they don't care about the football club as such. And we've got that with American investors at Palace where they were meant to help redevelop the wreck of a stadium we call Selhurst Park. I mean, I'm still amazed that the stadium hasn't collapsed at this point. You know, I mean, the main stand is there since we first moved there. So 
there's, you know, obviously when you've got people like Sheikh Mansour or Abramovich who can spend money as if it's a fiver, they can throw 20 million at something and it's a fiver to them. Mm-hmm. Americans are very, very tight fisted with their money. And obviously for Arsenal fans, they pay the highest amount of ticket prices in the league, which exactly. is a joke considering that they're not getting their money back on what they're spending on. You know, it, it's all well and good if you're Stoke City, Palace, West Brom, uh, Leicester, where you're getting what you expect is, you know, staying in the Premier League and not really in danger of relegation. But at Arsenal, if you're paying six hundred, seven hundred pound to watch you lose to Watford on a Tuesday night when you should be beating them, you're thinking, how's this worth seven hundred quid odd? And that's not excluding fans like Phil who'd go over, spend money on flights and whatever, you know. But it's classic American business. They don't care, you know. Americans don't care about the sport; they just care about the money. And of course, the money in the league um, is so saturated. Yeah, it's a it's a complete acceptance of mediocrity. If he can maximise maximise the turnover of the club, that's fine. So if Wenger's going to leave, Kroenke has to leave. Now there is talk of Usmanov yeah. trying to buy the the fifty one percent stake at Arsenal, and Jesus Christ, I hope it happens. Uh, there has to be a change on the board, and well, then a change. Arsenal fans are crying for Usmanov, but the problem that you have is that. You've got people like Ivan Gazidis, who's a yes man to Kroenke. You've got mm. so many yes men underneath Kroenke at Arsenal that yeah. any movement towards getting your club to where it should be is not going to. That's dangerous for a football club that challenges for trophies or wants to challenge for trophies. Um, it's completely different the lower the, down the league you go. Clubs like Huddersfield, Palace, Swansea, etc. A yes man is not a bad thing because you just want to stay in the league. But clubs like Arsenal, Everton, etc., they want to challenge and, and win and win silverware, which you can't do if you've got yes men not pushing the agenda towards the people in charge. So, you know, obviously, as an Arsenal fan, you've heard this countless times, you know, throughout your mates and all that. But obviously, sure. as an outsider, I've looked at it and gone, Arsenal shouldn't be in the position they're in, but it's a position of their own making, is what I'm going to say. Yeah, but they- the thing I would say is that they're in danger of the fact that uh, Mashiri's left them, left them to go to Everton, and then he's good friends with Usmanov, and there's yeah. there's a lot of talk of Usmanov because he's not allowed to do anything on the Arsenal board. The danger of yeah. that is if he leaves, then Kronke has full power of the club, and that's a big danger for Arsenal fans because yeah. he's not he's not he's not well, putting again, any money in. You well, know, well, again, you know, Kronke is a megalomaniac. He's the high sparrow of a Game of Thrones. It's just his way. A load of followers, <laughs> a load of followers underneath him. That's it. Uh, but what, what, joke, what, can, what can Arsenal what, do? What can Arsenal do to to <laughs> fix this issue? Just get rid. Oh, are, they still, are they still protesting? Are they still protesting in stadiums to get him out or what? No, not necessarily. Like the like you see the empty grounds and stuff like that. People not turning up the games, but it never. There's never a focus on the fact that they're doing it because they're boycotting the club. They're doing the facts just like, oh, Arsenal have shit fans. Arsenal don't go to games. Do you know what I mean? That's kind of the way the media are betraying it anyway. Um, like, obviously, you get the Arsenal fan TV and stuff, but, like, it's it's all the same stuff every time. Most Arsenal fans are blue in the face. They need to kind of start protesting with their money. But you still, like, we, we've such an international fan base that the Ember Stadium was still, you know, they still get the fans in. For the big games, for the Premier League games, you know. Yeah, of course, but like it's just a bit of a joke. To, like, if Usmanov pulls out, you know, and he he's one of the richest men in the world. You know, he's probably more. He's Richard probably didn't cronk himself, and he wants to spend money. Yeah. And he's not allowed to spend the money. So. I know. Yeah, yeah. And he'll get frustrated, and he'll go, and then it's kind of like that's your last hope, you know. Yeah. Well, I suppose we'll see what the what the what the fans have to kind of say about that. Um, have you got anything more to say about Arsenal besides Wenger out? No, no, Wenger uh, out. Yeah, just not really, because I get it in the neck from Arsenal fans all week. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna launch a Twitter campaign hashtag uh, Start Wheelchair. Get a petition. Also, I don't know what I don't know what I don't know what he has to do at this stage. Like he deserves a place in the team. The midfield is crap, basically. Hashtag Hurricane Ophelia. Or storm off video, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, we're still getting content out though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't say we don't look after you guys. Um, right, so I, I, we, I think we'll leave it there with, with regards to that point. Uh, any of the fans want to let, let us know what they think. Uh, do leave your comments because we are looking to do a, your comments show based on what you guys would uh, 
discuss on on our show. So, you know, absolutely. We get the laptop out. We'll have your name up on the screen and your comment there. Just let us know. Thanks very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV.